Oh God, this is the one that we get all the time. Probably weekly. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is unfortunately, I feel like we always have to squash a lot of people's dreams with this question, but <laughs> well, divert. We will go. divert is yes. the word, not squash. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. So the question is, what's the best way to go about buying a short term rental property? Okay. So short-term rental property, I think that the question a lot of times comes to us as an Airbnb-friendly property because mm -hmm. those two terms tend to be fairly interchangeable. Um, people come to us all the time and say, hey, I want to have it in town in the city. I want to be able to come in. I want to use it a little bit. I want to rent it out when I'm not there. Yep. The hard truth is, is that to try and acquire a condo to meet this type of, of possibility is a very, very small possibility. And one that that as advisors, I myself, and I think Samuel agrees with me too, can't really get behind. The reality is, as I would say at present time, and this is an estimation, but I would guess that about 75 to 85% of condo buildings in the city already have something in place that will restrict short-term tenancies. And by restrict, say, no way. Um, most of the, even the softer buildings might allow for six months, but under six months is really, really frowned down upon. Now there are buildings that will allow it, but my philosophy is if I'm helping an investor to invest in something, I have to be fully transparent. The reasons that these types of policies go into place is because somebody starts it in the building and somebody gets pissed <laughs> off. And so at that point in time, if there is a board in place, the board can say no way at any given time. Mm -hmm. So how can we as advisors go in and say, sure, it's okay. It's okay today. It'll be okay for as long as you want to own the property. We there's can't. There's just no certainty. No, there's absolutely no certainty at all. Now, the side note, the caveat, what is possible, um, obviously it can change the budget and the dynamic a lot, but in a type of housing structure that does not have an association, a multi-unit being a small residential investment building, typically with two to four units, mm -hmm. a single family home, or possibly a fee simple row house or townhome with no association. Yep. Those are going to be the places where it is possible. The numbers will or look Or you're not going to have like restrictions in the exactly. future. Exactly. So your, your investment is a little bit more protected. Exactly. Now, there are different price points. Um, yes. So for that perspective, it does end up squashing uh squashing people's <laughs> dreams a little bit when they come to us with this idea we just yeah. try and look at it from a different angle maybe it's something that they do a condo for an in-town and they spend a little bit less and then they're we're trying to hope on a little bit more appreciation in the neighborhood yeah. or something different we just have to divert the original ideas behind the uh the investment so i know like we're talking about how like condominium associations have restrictions on a lot of those airbnb and short-term rentals right yep. Do you find that you're seeing premiums on those properties that do allow Airbnbs as well, just because they aren't as readily available? So when those people are ready for an Airbnb property, are they willing to, to pay it? You know, to be completely transparent, I would say I don't know because I don't feel like I am working in the best interest of a client to say that that's possible. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it, I just know that long-term it could backfire on them. Um, and because I think that it could work so against their goals, literally, if somebody comes to me and says it, I once I make them clear on what could happen, yeah. I would say 99.9% .9 of them say, you know what, you're right, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Um, so totally. I, that's not a, that's just not a market that I've had anybody after that discussion want to go down. So I'd be I'd be giving you information that I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like it's just I, I'm I'm similar with you. Like a lot of my clients end up just not even wanting to do it just because it it just doesn't make sense. For so sure. I haven't seen a premium, but I know like it's it would not make as sense readily available, and so no, I know supply somebody, and demand. Yeah, exactly. it would make sense for certain. No, so long story short. Short-term vacation rental type properties uh, in the condo market are very, very difficult, especially with anybody that has long-term plans with it. So it's something that as advisors, we have a hard time getting behind because it, it really could work against our clients' plans. Yeah. Um, so there are other alternatives and there's other investments too. Yeah. So Chicago is just not short-term friendly, unfortunately. But I would, I say, would say even going down that, a, a lot of other states are, are getting behind that too. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of friends who like bought Airbnbs in Palm Springs and Palm Springs is starting Cracking to down. crack down on it. Cracking so down. You never know.